Adobe Flash, the computer software that allowed users to run a variety of applications right in their internet browser, was put to rest after 25 years on December 31st, 2020. For many Gen Zers, it can be remembered for being a platform for amateur animations and web browser games, many of which have been popularized through websites such as Newgrounds and cool math games. To commemorate Flash's great contributions to many of our childhoods and to the internet as a whole, it seems fit that today we pay respect to Flash and look at its history and its legacy. In the early 1990s, a group dedicated to Macintosh users allowed Jonathan Gay and Charlie Jackson to meet. The two were united under their common interest in developing software for Apple computers, and together, along with marketing head Michelle Welsh, they founded FutureWave. Their eyes were set on a new trend that was rising in tech, stylus operated computers. The software Smart Sketch was their attempt to colonize the graphic design space and make drawing on a computer as easy as it was to draw on paper. During product testing, users pointed out the software's potential as a tool for animation, comments that the developers took heed of by implementing basic animation functions before its official release. This inclusion that almost seemed to be an offhand thought would soon become the foundation of Flash. The stylus computing trend would eventually flop and with its smart sketch. But a new tech trend was on the rise, the World Wide Web. And unlike stylus computing, this trend was here to stay. Software products began advertising themselves as being made for the web, and Charlie Jackson suggested that they hop on the bandwagon. They looked at the playing field for designing web pages and noted that there weren't many tools to help designers, mostly just tools to edit text. So FutureWave's next project was decided. It would make a software that could both produce and play animations right on a web page. By repurposing their animation component from the Smart Sketch software, they were able to develop an animation tool for web designers called Future Splash. Their product operated using two components, Future Splash Animator, the software which web designers use to create basic frame-by-frame -frame animations, and Future Splash Player, the web plugin which internet users had to download in order to view the designer's animations. Up to that moment, FutureWave had been operated with no money or market attention, something that desperately needed to change. So before releasing the product, they gave a shot at selling and pitched it to Adobe, who would unfortunately pass on their deal. For now. Feature Splash would go into the market without any buyers, but as it turned out, multiple other companies saw potential in the technology. Microsoft decided to use it as part of their new MSN web portal, and another company, the Disney-owned site called The Daily Blast, noted that Feature Splash would be great for their kids' multimedia section. The Daily Blast mentioned Feature Splash to Macromedia, who had been pitching their own web player, and Macromedia soon approached FutureWave to discuss acquisition. And in January 1997, the deal was made official a move that Future Splash's developers saw as the best thing to happen to their product. Later that year in May, their product would be released. Not as Future Splash, but as their new rebranded name, Flash. Flash immediately became a hit. It became the default tool for web designers to add some flourish to their sites. Not only would Flash provide the ability to add drawings and animations, but interactive experiences as well. This interactive component, much like the animation component of the original Smart Sketch, was an afterthought that turned out to launch Flash into popularity. These capabilities were simple at first. For animations, users could play, stop, move freely in the timeline, go to a specific frame, and later go to specific scenes or the next scene in the timeline. These functions, though simple, were pushed to the max by the ingenuity of internet users. Web designers were no longer using Flash to design and play animations, they were using it to make full-on games, something that Flash's creators didn't even think was possible. A web developer named Tom Fulp saw Flash as a godsend for his creative endeavors, which at the moment were limited to joke web pages and simple JavaScript games that he hosted on his website called Newgrounds. His Flash games became hugely popular and he later created a page on Newgrounds called The Portal, where he could upload his unfinished creations and most importantly, Flash games and animations submitted by other creators. They began flooding Newgrounds with their own work, so much so that by 2001, Newgrounds had become one of the biggest hubs for Flash content on the internet, thus launching the careers of Flash creators who could potentially get noticed by Newgrounds' 18 million unique visitors a month. Flash entertainment was huge, not just on Newgrounds, but on other sites that had also dedicated themselves to hosting Flash content. 
In 2002, a milestone for Flash came in the form of Flash MX, its sixth iteration which added full video support. Web video before had been hindered due to incompatibilities between browsers and operating systems, but Flash MX allowed users to take advantage of its cross-compatibility by embedding videos right inside of a Flash animation. Because of this, in 2005, Flash became one of the parents of the video sharing site called YouTube. YouTube's popularity launched Flash into further success, and soon Flash became essentially a requirement for web explorers. Designers and developers became reliant on the software, and browsers were even including Flash as part of their downloads. Adobe noticed and came back to snatch the one that got away in a $3.6 billion buyout of Macromedia, with $3 billion of that deal being allocated to Flash. The software had been a success for years now, credited with its early start as a content creator tool and growing to an implied standard of the web, with its competitive edge being cross-compatibility. But just like how technology moved on from pen-based computers to the web in the smart sketch days, another trend was looming on the horizon. Smartphones. The iPhone launched in 2007, and if Flash were to keep its market advantage, they needed to adapt again, similar to how they adapted to the web in the late 90s. In a race with other browsers to port their capabilities to mobile, Adobe attempted to create a lightweight version of Flash that would run on the iPhone. But Flash lost out to the rising standard of the web, HTML, which had been improving its consistency and performance and successfully replacing a lot of Flash's functionality. Steve Jobs cemented Flash's position in last place by excluding it completely from the iPhone. He would later justify this with a letter called Thoughts on Flash where he critiqued it down to the very bone, from its performance to its closed source nature. Because mobile web was redefining the internet as a whole, developers began phasing out Flash due to its exclusion from the mobile takeover. Even YouTube, which had been birthed by Flash, was phasing it out in favor of the HTML technology. Eventually, modern browsers integrated current technologies, and almost a decade later also announced that they would be completely blocking Flash in upcoming months. Thus, in 2017, following the announcements, Adobe themselves announced that they would end support for the Flash software in 2020. In conclusion, or should I say, in retrospect, Flash fell victim to the same phenomenon it rose from, the evolving trends of technology. Was Steve Jobs right in essentially spelling out the death of the software? He did have some valid points, Flash was flawed in its performance, reliability, security, and other areas. But Flash was also incredible for its time and served its function exceedingly well. It kicked off the reputation of popular websites, most notably YouTube and Newgrounds, as well as the careers of budding content creators. As a content creator and frequent web surfer myself, I think it's fitting that we say a proper goodbye to Adobe Flash. May it rest in peace. Thanks for watching.